Hello everyone, MasterZan101 here, and in this video I want to talk about the new Boolean system in Blender 2.91.0. Previously 2.91 was experiencing all sorts of interesting curiosities, however now things have gotten fairly stable to the point we can begin using it. And so the latest updates to HardOps and BoxCutter both offer options for the Boolean solver. Right here we have it set to exact, however for this example, we could just set it to fast, it doesn't matter. And we can press control tilde and go under the bull options and we can actually set the algorithm here if you're using 2.91 to use either fast or exact. And the benefits of using exact are pretty straightforward. We'll just duplicate this cube and select both of them, use Q and union them together and do it again. And this is normally something that would never be possible in the previous version of the Blender without issues happening with bullions because of issues with coplanar merging. But whenever Howard was working on this, this was one of the uh, most basic tests I would do with bullions to just kind of test it. I would try to just merge a series of cubes all together. You know, it seems real simple, but it is a real easy test to replicate. But also, you know, looking at it all together, union together to be a manifold shape is just something magical. So let's say that we want to take this to the next level, right? We press Q and we put a bevel on this. We see that, you know, everything kind of works out except the first cube shaded right, but the rest of the cubes just aren't receiving their shading. So what we can do is just press Alt H and unhide everything, jump to the second collection here. And we'll just control tilde and just shade smooth on it. And now we actually are somewhere good. If we press Alt V, we can look at the wireframe. This is what our wireframe looks like so far on this mesh. So if we wanted to kind of simplify this, we could press Q and go under add modifiers and just put a decimate on it. And now it's actually cleaned up and we'll just drag that up above the bevel because we have our modifier panel. And now if we just go through our modifier scroll, you can see this come to life. And that is the new Boolean system in action. It's pretty magical. And this is just a very basic example. If you bring the hops button down, you'll notice that there, in addition to a bevel helper, we also have a Boolean helper now where you can actually change on the fly whether you want it to use a fast or exact system. So I found that sometimes if you have a fast one or a exact one somewhere in your stack, but you're using a series of fast modifiers that your performance will be hit. So sometimes you may want to be able to switch them all over to the fast system on the fly. And that's the purpose of this. So if we choose F, we see that this is what would happen if we use the traditional Boolean system right here. If we tried to just union everything together, it would fail to this sort of level. In fact, let's shift scroll through our modifier scroll and we can see that it worked up to this point. But if we look on the inside, it didn't work at all. And the difference is pretty clear. Once you get in here and change it to exact, we can see that interior face just disappear. And so that's the basis behind this, this Boolean update and us doing this update for hard ops to allow for people to switch between on the fly because sometimes you'll want to use this and sometimes you won't. For example, right now I'm about to do a cut with box cutter and we see that you know the performance got pretty heavy there. In fact, we put a weight normal on top so now we have a few more modifiers in the mix to get our shading just right. And next time we perform that cut, we can see this just a little bit heavier. In fact, let's change this over to exact and we see that whenever we perform a cut, it just becomes completely, well, now it makes a full of me. So we'll just continue cutting. Everything so far so good. We'll just add another bevel level on top of that. And we'll perform another cut. And we may get in here and adjust that level of bevel. And you can see that as I begin to bring it down, it begins to get just a little bit heavy. And this is expected whenever you just sit in there on the exact system without any sort of planning or intention. I mean, right now, box cutter isn't set up to basically use exact bullions. However, it is just a matter of us going in and messing with the offset in order to do so. But it really isn't necessary in order to perform quick little cuts because the Z fighting is still something that I still contemplate on how to get rid of visually. You know, it'd be nice if we could detect Z fighting visually and just eradicate it because, you know, the alpha hit a certain thickness, but 
you know, these are just the sort of things that I'm pondering, but we see that with every subsequent cut, it just gets slower. In fact, I'm sometimes waiting a few seconds after the cut in order for it to go through. I'm sure there's also people out there that are like, what's going on with this guy's pink wireframe? It's visible and I like it, you know, also um, breast cancer awareness. But continuing on, we'll just scroll a couple of bevels in this where it's just completely choking out, making this i9 look like an i3 or an Intel Atom or something tragic. You know, we have to use spacebar in order to apply it. Of course, we can always go into pause mode where it's just good. We just draw it and then the hit for speed actually comes at the end of the operation. And there's been a lot of work done to box cutter in order to make sure that this works at the end of the operation exactly as it's supposed to. There were previously a couple of bugs that forbid it from working entirely 100%, but I'm now happy to report that pause mode is now just as good as it's supposed to be. So what if I did actually want my speed back and I wanted to continue to work? I mean, you know, I'm working with multiple levels of bevels here, so I don't want to begin using a coplanar modeling just yet, but how would we do that? Well, I would say your best friend in this case would probably be the simplicity of Smart Apply. Let's look at our modifier stack here. Even though I'm complaining about speed hits, this is still a pretty good modifier stack. And if we look at our modifiers in terms of exact, 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 fast, exact, 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 we have a lot of exact action happening here and we're still able to work pretty good. So, you know, I was actually preparing to do this video and complain a lot more, but things are actually a lot better than I was expecting. In fact, if we just were to change everything over to fast, we see that this match is over. It's hashtag it's over party, but we change it back to exact. We're going to get the intended result, but the speed head is just going to be too much. And we're in pause mode, so we're still able to work. But if we were to go back to live mode and attempt to work in live because everybody wants to be live, we see that this is no way for a man to live. So how would we get the speed back? Well, for me, that is where I would use Smart Apply. So we press Q and we use Smart Apply. Just look at my modifier stack get cleaned up over here. And now when we perform our next cut, there we are in pause mode, looking good. But here we are in live mode also looking very good with our speed brought back to us. So sometimes whenever things get a little bit choky, you have to break a few eggs. You have to really look at your model and analyze and you know ask yourself, hey, is this the point in which I do want to apply and keep going? Am I truly content with this level of modeling? Which is something that I also find myself struggling with. You know, you often want to keep the block in all the way until the very end. But you know, sometimes you just gotta let iterative files handle that instead of uh, try to handle it all at once. But you know, these lessons, I guess, are best learned in action instead of being told through a tutorial video. So continuing on, I believe that gets the point across about the differences between the new Boolean system between fast and the exact system and how you can use it on the fly with box cutter and hard ops, in addition to a few tips on how to get your speed back. So with that, I'll wrap up this video and I'll see you guys next time. So over the course of this video, I showed a little bit about how I play with the new Boolean system in action. Uh, since I still have it enabled by default with it being exact, another way I like to test it is I'll shift A, add a cylinder, and instead of scaling things around, we'll just move the cylinder off to the side, press S, shift Z, and we'll just go into edit mode and press Alt Z to see through it, and press B for box select, E, X, S, X, zero. We press R, four, five in order to just rotate this 45. So Everything's still the exact same scale. We'll just select both of these and union them together. And it almost works out. And more than likely the reason that it failed is because of all the supplemental geo that's in the middle. I didn't bother cleaning it. So if we go under operators and just choose to clean the mesh, we see that we get a more desirable result. So I find it with the new bullet system that it definitely excels a little bit better whenever you give it simplified geometry versus just throwing everything at it at this time. We'll press Alt X and just mirror it across on the X by shift clicking this, keeping the mirror tool active, and then we'll just mirror it to the other side. And here we are just with our simple shape. And continuing on just messing with this, we can use our mod scroll to bring the shape back. And because we have an origin, we can shift S, snap our cursor there, and just place our cylinder and S, shift and Z to scale on everything but Z. And we'll just select both of these and perform a difference. And we see that it almost worked out, but we'll just press SZ, give it a little bit of overshoot. And we see that some rules just 
have to remain. In fact, if we go in our Boolean dropdown, we see that both of these are exact. However, I had to overshoot it just a little bit in order to get this to work. And that's just one of the things that's just par for the course whenever it comes to using the Boolean system uh, in 2.91. You may run into occasional bugs with it, but these are things that you know best are reported to the thread in order to you know keep Howard improving this thing. But I'm still very optimistic for the future of what this thing offers. So I want to end this video showing just another case in which I use it in action. And to make this video just a little bit extra, we could press QOT and just roll backwards and go to decap and press X to change its axis. And we'll just scroll this in, press C in order to make this a cap keeping array mesh. And then when we click, we actually have it selected, meaning I can press G and X and move it over to the side. If we press Alt W and switch over to hop stool, I can just grab this dot and we can actually choose how big this is via array. So now this is an array mesh that has this cap set up by the decapitation it will set up here. And that's just a little glimpse of what we'll be talking about in the next video. I even made this little gun turret using the new Boolean system. In fact, this uses the uh, same decap example that I showed previously with a little bit of box cutter at the end. In fact, if I were to take this in local mode and shift scroll through modifier scroll, you can see the uh, modifiers and booleans that have made up this particular shape and how it was put together. Same with this piece, you know, while it looks complex, it was just a matter of me playing with custom bevel profiles, I have a whole video about that, and then using just a little bit of box cutter and some of the classic tricks of uh, line box to just get in there and cut. I do plan also to do a video recursively talking about some of the new features of hard ops like the wire display that shows up in modifier scroll. It's one of my favorite features for helping kind of show what's going on exactly. In fact, special care was made to make sure that even when you press A to toggle it off and on, that it actually shows which shape is being toggled off and on. But it's just a fun way to work. And so when I talk about creating this with new Boolean, you know, we could just start over with the new scene. And if I were to use something like QOT, um, we can actually bring up to shape through the Q menu operations and to shape, a hotkey that we don't intend to change anytime soon. But in the latest update of to shape, you can now change your shape over to different shapes like cylinder and then control scroll in order to offset which side that you're placing it. So here we are just placing a cylinder just directly on the other side of this cube. We can select both of these, press QOT again. And now we have a cube that's the exact same size and we're just rolling it around and we're placing it on the side of that. We select both of these, press QOT, and we press space bar and we go to a cylinder and we will just place that here. We select this again and we press QOT and we'll just place this box at the end. And notice that the origins are always placed right where it's first connecting. So that way, if we wanted to scale this down, we could press S and X, we could press S and Y. We could just bring this back as far as we need. We can just slide this in just as far as it's needed for whatever we're going for. We select both of these. You know, I'll select this one first, select this one, press Q. We'll union them together. Press one to go to my default collection. I need to probably take a drink of water. You know, we'll take this opportunity to press QOT. We'll uh, press space bar and jump to a cylinder and we'll just scale that down. Press S and Y, bring this out and select both of these, perform a difference. And let's say we want to just make this adjustable, right? We'd press QOT, press space bar, go to decap, press X, X, X until we get the axis that we want. And then at this point, probably want to hold control in order to mess with the offset. Press C in order to bring the shape back and we can really adjust the offset to get it perfect. And this is about what we deserve. So let's just move this to the end. I have this placement idea in my head you know, hopefully we get to it sometime in the future. But I have this idea for a tool that could assist with placement that I think would be really interesting. But just like that, you can just create quick shapes on the fly just using the new Boolean system, using the two shape decap system, and just placing things very quickly and um, without a whole lot of issue. In fact, if I wanted to place something on top, I would press QOT. Uh, we just control roll the wheel. And I plan to do a whole video talking about QOT. I've been trying to actually give Pawnee a chance to talk about this thing because I figured that they would be uh, pretty excited about it, but I, f I think I'll just beat them to the punch with it. So we'll select everything again, just press QOT, and we can just press SX, scale this up. And because we're using 2.91 and we're in the exact system, we could just union them together. Look at this from the side and press Alt W 
jump over to box cutter, we'll just draw a box, press space bar, switch over to end gun, and just perform some some classics, you know. I'm like Elvis, I always get in these videos and hit you guys with the classics, the old 45 degree notch. But just like that, we're able to very quickly begin getting somewhere with the shape. And keep in mind that the construction of this was all done with the same operator, just QOT, which was provided to us as a suggestion. I plan to go over it in a more um, formal setting, but this video's topic is supposed to be, to be about the new Boolean, so we'll just keep it focused for now, but we'll select this piece and go ahead and sharpen that. We'll scale this out and, you know, to recursively use our trick that we were talking about previously, we'll scale that down on every axis, but the axis that we intend to merge in and SX0, press Q, operations, clean mesh, because we're not mucking around anymore. And we'll go ahead and just choose to union them together. And of course, unions will just work without issue anymore. I just can't get over this. It's truly a new era uh, to experience in life if you've been um, doing bullets this whole time. We'll snap our cursor here so I can uh, place a cylinder like a barbarian. Believe me, every time I do this, I ponder how we should come up with a shift A version of two shape. And it was part of the original plans for this one, but things started to get a little bit complicated with it. So we'll be um, doing a revisit on it in the future, but I am very proud of the work that's already been done with it. It already exceeds my expectations of what I initially wanted with it. But you know me, I always want more. So there we are just quickly creating shapes and just getting through this. We'll press D, go back to end gun. We'll switch blade there. And, you know, shift scroll down our smoothing to get it to something more agreeable. And you see that, you know, even though I'm working under exact for both box cutter and hard ops, things are still pretty fast live. I mean, solidifies get a little choky there, but I could always go into pause mode. Sometimes I wish there was a hotkey for pause mode, but Really, live mode is just where it's at, isn't it? So we'll just select this, press Q, O, T, or wrong option. We'll press Q, O, T, and this time we'll space bar and choose decap, and X to choose Y, and we'll press C in order to set this as the cap. And now we have this piece created, so we'll just drag this to the end. And if we were to Alt W over to box cutter or hard ops, we could see that this is now a repeatable element. So that's pretty much all there is to it. However, repeating something like this that's so serious so many times is just terrible. We shouldn't do that. We should definitely bring this back to something more reasonable. But just like that, just shaping things around and sliding things over and over, playing with two shape, I was able to just quickly get into the groove of things. So I hope that um, you know this was something assistive as well. But with that, I'll truly wrap up this video.